Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Now getting into the uh, data for the week ahead, the 20th of November in the United States. The main focus will be on the FOMC meeting minutes, followed by durable goods orders, S&P global services and manufacturing PMIs, along with existing and new home sales. Internationally, preliminary manufacturing and services PMIs will surface for Australia, France, Germany, uh, the Euro area, the United Kingdom and Japan. Inflation rates will be scrutinised in Canada and Japan. That will be definitely important um, as that will determine really um, central bank monetary policy. And um, finally, Germany will publish their LFO business climate. So a um, few things to look uh, towards also as well this week is going to be a shorter week as there is uh, Thanksgiving as well. So um, I think on Thursday. So uh, short of trading week this week. So um, before we get into uh, uh, some of the technicals and some more fundamentals, um, just for those of you who are in the uh, the mentoring group, um, I have uploaded the um, the uh, the analysis that I do for the private members in the trading videos channel. So just go to trading videos. Uh, click on the link there, enter the passcode provided and you've got trading videos and then basically uh, you've got your um, uh, more detailed fundamental analysis that goes into uh, a lot more than you uh, will see in this uh, YouTube video as well as the previous week's uh, videos as well that are all here. So um, getting into the, uh, the technicals now and dollar index just a measure of overall dollar strength and uh, the dollar really kind of sold off uh, this week and it was really based on um, the fact that inflation came down slightly more than expected so it says here dollar tumbles most in a year as traders bet on end of US hikes and currency falls as yields tumble rate cut bets moved up easing consumer price inflation spurs reset across markets so the dollar tumbled by the most in a year after a soft inflation data led traders to ramp up bets the federal reserve will start cutting rates by mid 2024 sending treasury yields plunging um, and the bloomberg gauge of the dollar tumbled as much as 1.3 percent on tuesday the largest drop since november 2020 it stayed close to the previous day's close on Wednesday, helping propel the one and Rignet um, uh, to the top of the Asia currency rankings. The, the moves followed the report that showed US headline and core inflation in October slowed more than economists had forecasts. And really, uh, why is that important? It's because the hawkish bets are really fading, right? So the market was positioning itself for a potential hike and now that inflation is still on its way down um, and it came down slightly more than expected, um, the market is now pricing out the possibility of the Federal Reserve hiking uh, rates um, for, 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 let's say for good, but for this, uh, at least this hiking cycle. So hawkish bets fade. So Fed swap contracts indicate that the odds of another rate increase have fallen to nearly zero with the timing of the first anticipated rate cut pulled up to May or June. And it's really important to understand this concept of rates, um, you know, next year being priced in. And I have a video, uh, if you do a search on my channel or just on YouTube for its fundamental trading webinar, how interest rate forecasts move today's price. And I really kind of go over um, how the market prices in interest rate hikes and cuts, you know, six to nine to sometimes even 12 months ahead of time and how that actually affects um, today's uh, uh, prices and exchange rates, right? And so that's what's happening now. We're seeing rate cuts being uh, priced in slightly sooner, which is having an effect on dollar uh, strength and it says here the quote is that the markets have moved to pricing more rate cuts next year and pulling forward the start of the easing cycles said Parrish um, director of fixed income and currency strategy at uh, Amundi US he said there's a lack of fundamental data in the short term the higher probability of no hike in December and the market that is wrong-footed could give us uh, could give this rally some legs now um, 
I'm slightly of a different opinion in terms of dollar, or dollar weakness. I still think the dollar may be supported simply because of um, the fact that the dollar isn't necessarily the worst currency out there. So when you look at the, the actual raw data, so for me, yes, I think the dollar was definitely overdue a pullback. When you look at uh, prices going from uh, these lows in July to these highs in October, we rarely, we didn't even have really a deep, uh, any kind of deep pullback. So um, I was probably thinking that there was going to be at least uh, a move to the downside at some point, And that makes all the sense in the world. You know, we should probably even pull back to maybe some sort of fair value because this is obviously a bargain price down here. This is an expensive price for the dollar. And so a pullback to at least fair value was is always on the cards, basically mean reversion, right? So um, there's always um, a reversion to the mean. There always will be. And so, yep. You can see uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was saying that prices could come down to these these areas here. And so this is basically what's happened. There is still a demand zone at the moment. Um, at the, uh, yeah, so right now you could look for any kind of buy trades, not necessarily in the dollar index, but just on any kind of dollar crosses. But I do think there's a possibility that prices could come down to this um, uh, this demand zone also as well there is uh, you do have a level of support and resistance within that area of uh, demand and so there's so technically I think this can be uh, this is probably a really nice level to look for any kind of uh, long trades if you are looking to go long on the dollar if you're not and you're looking for pullbacks on the dollar then really you're probably looking at any moves um, up here for confluence for prices to really kind of come all up here or if prices make lower lows, which actually they have technically, let me zoom in a bit, you can look for some short trades. So you're looking for prices to come up to this supply zone and then on any other dollar cross, uh, you know, look for any kind of short trades as this is basically seen as an expensive area for the dollar as it's broken to new lows or pullback. This might be another bargain price or, a, or an expensive price, I should say, for the dollar and then it could be on its way down. So the dollar at the moment, um, it's slightly tricky one, but um, I, do, I don't think that it's going to be um, a massive uh, sell-off um, at, at all. I think if it does start to sell off, I think there's still definitely buying opportunities for the dollar, right? Looking at the dollar, uh, dollar yen, dollar yen, you know, is coming down as well. Um, I do want to be more of a buyer on the uh, on the dollar yen uh, for the really the main reason of um, the data came out recently uh, this week, and uh, it was Japan's economy shrinks, backing the Bank of Japan and government stimulus case. So return to contraction underscores fragility of recovery, weak yen inflation, and uncertainties a broad weight on outlook and so Japan's economy slipped back into reverse over the summer underscoring the fragility of the country's recovery and backing the case for continued support for the Bank of Japan in, uh, and the government which really is um, is uh, they're looking to still continue to kind of well the effect of support is really to continue to devalue the currency and so uh, the contraction was much deeper than economists estimate of a 0.4 percent shrinkage the yen weakened against the dollar following the release and wednesday's data suggests that japan's economic recovery is more fragile than previously thought and in need of continued government and central bank support. The results may give the Bank of Japan a reason to delay any policy shift. So no hiking of rates just yet uh, or, or changing of yield curve control towards normalization in the face of continued uncertainties, including currency weakness, prolonged inflation and a cloudy outlook overseas. So um, there were reasons to try to look for buy trades on that yen. But I think now with the economy contracting more than expected, um, I don't know about buying the uh, the yen. I'd rather look for pullbacks. So any pullbacks um, down into you know one of these zones, especially maybe this uh, this where we are actually probably from now really. I think these areas are, are decent for uh, to look for buy trades or down into maybe the one four eight fifties, right? So that can go across and uh, these uh, supportive levels, uh, potentially supportive levels within 
um, within this zone. So um, again, as bad as you, you know you might think the dollar is in terms of uh, uh, inflation coming down and the central bank not hiking rates, I think the uh, the yen is definitely in a worse position. So I think again, we do a pullback. I'm looking for starting to look for longs in and around this area um, on the um, on the dollar yen also as well uh, we do have there is opportunity of course to look for short trades and that's where you would start to look for short trades up at these uh, highs around the 151152s uh, moving on to the dollar cad and the dollar cad this week did sell off obviously there is a uh, cad data coming out on Tuesday, which is inflation year on year, as well as the FOMC minutes. And so I do think that there actually is an opportunity to buy the Canadian dollar, although I'm overall bearish on the uh, Canadian dollar. I think there's an opportunity if, again, inflation comes out um, higher than expected. So the forecast is for, is for 3.2. If it comes in lower, then you would expect prices to really kind of, you know, continue to go higher in terms of the Canadian dollar getting weaker. But if inflation does come out um, uh, higher than expected in terms of like 3.3, 3.4, uh, that would indicate that um, inflation is remaining sticky and therefore you could see in fact the Canadian dollar strengthen against the US dollar and we could you know see some uh, downside so um, again I would probably look for any kind of pullbacks um, in either direction depending on what happens uh, with the news but I wouldn't necessarily look for uh, CAD buys against the US dollar that's not really a pair I'm, I would look to trade if I'm looking to buy the Canadian dollar. It'd be something against maybe like the pound or the euro. So those are the those would be the two pairs or even the, the, the yen as well. So if the uh, CAD yen um, would be a decent uh, bet if you're buying the Canadian dollar over the um, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, buying it for... Uh, the inflation coming in stickier or higher than expected. New Zealand and um, yeah, New Zealand dollar at the moment. Uh, I would say zooming out a bit. Yeah, where I think the New Zealand dollar is really just strengthening on the back of uh, some dollar weakness, which is really what's been happening overall um, uh, for, for the majority of currencies. So if you are looking to be a buyer of the um, the 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 uh, the New Zealand dollar at the moment you'd probably have to wait for prices to come back down to this demand zone right here um, or you're waiting for a higher high and then pull back into a demand zone to look for some long trades so you're either looking at a pullback down into that demand zone or a move that goes higher and then a pullback down into that if you are looking at buying the US dollar against the New Zealand dollar I do think that this um, this supply zone here is really nice for a potential sell. Um, I think that's really nice, and that sets up for a really nice stop hunt as well above the uh, the highs. So definitely uh, some trading opportunities there if you're looking to trade that pair. Uh, the pound dollar again uh, this week or last week we did have uh, prices move to the upside, not necessarily based off of um, pound strength, but more just a dollar revaluation. So yeah, prices did come up to like the one, two, fives and kind of stopped right there on that round number. So um, the pound at the moment, again, not doing well either. So there was uh, some data that came out, UK retail sales post surprise fall as rate hikes Bite. So decline of 0.3% uh, in October blamed on consumer cutting back pound falls as figures uh, fuel bets. Again, rate cuts should come back come by May. So you're noticing a the theme uh, with all these um, currencies is that rate cuts are on the horizon next year. So um, UK retail sales fell unexpectedly in October, adding to the impression that a string of interest rate hikes designed to beat down inflation is beginning to stymie economic activity. So the more you hike rates, the more you increase borrowing and lending costs in an economy, uh, both for businesses and the consumer, 
then um, it will lead to economic contraction. So the figures, the retail figures are the latest indication ooh, uh, that the economy is beginning to feel the effects of 14 consecutive rate hikes on the Bank of England in its battle against inflation. The squeeze on households is likely to intensify next year when an estimated 1.6 million mortgages are set to be refinanced at significantly higher rates and so yeah it doesn't look great for the pound either right so as much as you know the focus the market tends to focus on the dollar and what the federal reserve are doing um the the uk uh, aren't necessarily in the uh, the best of positions either and i would still argue in fact that the um the pound is um is in a worse position than the uh, than the US, so my bias would still be to look for potential uh, short trades. There is uh, something something to that. Um, so for me, any pullbacks up into this area here, as long as obviously the the, the data doesn't um, start to stabilize with the uh, US dollar, I think this is going to be a decent area to look for a pullback. And again, when we look at these uh, maybe yearly highs, yeah, they were yearly highs in comparison to, I wouldn't say necessarily yearly lows, but these are the, the you know the most recent lows. You know, again, you would expect um, some sort of pullback to some degree. We could pull back to uh, some fair value, which actually might be about the one five six. So we could see something around here in terms of a pullback, but I think overall the dollar is still for me a sell. And if you do want to get long on the pound, again, just like the uh, New Zealand dollar, you'd have to really wait for either a pullback down into that area of demand or wait for prices to you know, make higher highs, then pull back into a demand zone, a newly created demand zone before looking at getting long. Um, pound, yen, um, pound, yen, I think fundamentally probably you maybe want to look for buyers on the pound if I'm looking to... Uh, trade this probably be yeah where we are now so any pullbacks into that area there I think are decent buys so um, when it comes to uh, short trades I think you've just got an area where well, that level hasn't been touched since 2015 so I don't know where I'd draw a supply zone from there but it's definitely an area to uh, to watch I think if it breaks past this supply zone or this demand zone then any pullbacks into that area I think are going to be decent for a potential um, sell of course if you want to position yourself to, to get involved in going uh, long on the uh, on the yen but for now at least in the short term the uh, the Bank of Japan are dovish and so um, not really a pair I'm interested in trading to be fair divergence really isn't there but um there are decent buying opportunities as prices come down if you're looking to buy the uh, the pound euro dollar euro dollar again this week we had prices uh, really kind of uh, uh make this massive move a bit i think it was a bit of an overreaction some market analysts are were saying um but technically We've now created this demand zone and in fact come up into this area of supply where we also have a um, an area of support and resistance. So there is significant trading or there has been historical trading in and around this area. We've got support there, resistance, resistance. So this area here, the 109s could be a decent technical level to look for some short trades um, for me buying the euro um, there's no reason for me to buy the euro I know some people are buying the euro uh, based off of dollar weakness which is you know a trade idea which is you know which is fine if you want to do that but also just keep in mind that traders bet on the ECB rate cuts next year also right so rate cuts are coming across the board and weak economic data is fueling bets on lower interest rates Germany's 10-year yield fell almost 20 basis points this week and so Europe's sputtering economy 
is causing traders to bet on faster pace of rate interest rate cuts next year. For the first time, money markets have priced in a full percentage point of interest rate cuts in 2024. Just two months ago, the expectation was that the European Central Bank would deliver a 75 basis point decrease according to swaps pricing tied to central bank meeting dates. Bets on similar easing by the Bank of England accelerated Friday after weaker than forecast UK retail sales numbers. Traders are also anticipating 100 basis points of cuts by the Federal Reserve next year with signs of cooling price pressures on show this week. Plus, oil's descent into bear market has uh, reignited worries about a recession. So, um, yeah, there's um, there's a lot of fear going around. Um, it says here that the evidence builds that an aggressive string of rate hikes is starting to take its toll on the economy and if the uh, European economy uh, it's becoming harder to convince the market to follow the mantra of higher for longer. Uh, Germany's 10 year yield has fallen almost 20 basis points, as we know. Um, and so, yeah. And what's interesting as well is, is this final bit here is that, you know, wages by traders uh, around the world pull. Uh, that, that pull forward the timing of rate cuts are causing some unusual market dynamics, according to Steve Barrow, head of G10 strategy at Standard Bank. Swaps pricing suggests that there is a high probability that the Fed will start cutting rates from May, with the ECB following suit another, oh, sorry, a month later and uh, the Bank of England in August, he said. And he said that we think this is wrong. And I agree with um, with Barrow, Mr. Barrow. Um, you know, he wrote on a Friday, in the note on Friday, he says, we will we find it strange that the market prices such an early Fed move when the economy is so much more robust than what we see in Europe. And that's exactly it. This is the reason why. So, so because you have, um, at the moment, the the um, the European economy is contracted. I think it's at minus zero point one percent quarter on quarter. Whereas on quarter on quarter in the US, you have um, the latest data was that it's a four point nine percent. So if the European, if the eurozone is in the potential contraction phase, and if they have one more quarter of contraction, negative growth, then they're in the technical recession. Shouldn't that really, or that should, um, make the uh, the European Central Bank really um, start to cut rates sooner? Yeah, because the US are a lot further away in terms of their their economy and 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 the growth of their economy, right? So, um, like I said, I would agree with you know Stephen Barrow in terms of why would you buy the euro when they're already in the contraction phase um, of their economic cycle. Uh, and the potential for a recession. So let's see what happens with that. So my bias is not necessarily to buy the euro. Yes, we've seen the euro pull back. And again, just to give it a bit of context, you know, the yearly high to where we are now in that low, uh, you know, again, we would probably do a pullback. We've come back to fair value. So I think this is starting to look now, anything above fair value starts to look like more of a bargain for the, you know, the US dollar. Of course, this could keep going higher, but my bias is still to look for some short trades, even if it goes up to like the one tens. I think that would be really the reason why um, I would want to continue my short trades or short trade bias on the uh, on the euro dollar, regardless of what happened this week. This is just another. Um, this is a better opportunity to get short and uh, look for some you know some nicer risk reward uh, trades. Um, so that's where my bias is. But of course, if you do want to be a buyer, you know, there are some levels that you want to look towards in terms of either there or you can look for the 107s if prices do pull back that far. Euro yen, um, euro yen again, I'm not too sure whether the uh, whether the yen is going to recover anytime soon. So it looks like continued buyers as bad as um, as bad as Europe is. It just looks like. Uh, the the yen this is going to continue to weaken so any pullbacks into the 16150 area I think is going to be probably nice for a to look for any kind of long trades or even down into the 16050s or round number um, or the 159 so around there would be decent for a potential uh, long Aussie um, uh, the Aussie dollar. Let me just uh, delete some of this analysis from the previous week. So 
where we are now, we've really been in this auction, this range between, um, you know, the 65s, right? So between here and here, right? Decent range, right? Um, I do think that there's the potential for the Australian dollar. I'm bullish on the Australian dollar, um, not necessarily against the US dollar, but um, I do think that the Australian dollar is, is a buy. But if you do want to be a buyer, of the Australian dollar, I think any kind of um, pullback really would be nice down into these 63 areas, or again, looking for a, a move higher, higher high, pullback into that higher low, which would be now new demand like this. And then you're looking for a potential uh, buy into that. So that's proof of value. And then a pullback that would be a decent move but if you're looking for any kind of short trades and buying the uh, US dollar then in fact I do think that any pullbacks and even above that 6550 area that could act as a really nice stop hunt to look for any kind of short trades um, to the uh, to the downside or just basically a nice uh, supply zone fresh area of supply and decent area to look for some shorts and uh, looking at the Aussie yen, I think any pullbacks on this is definitely going to be a nice buy. So um, we can delete that supply zone, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, we're up at these highs. Just be mindful that you are buying in a potential expensive area. But I do think any pullbacks into this 96.65 area is going to be a very nice buy, considering that you know the. Um, the economy for Japan has just kind of gone into that contraction phase and uh, also as well the RBA are quite hawkish so I think any pullbacks going to be nice uh, in this area here any short trades I guess you'd have to really um, look for either a pullback into the uh, these highs or again and maybe a move above and maybe look for some sort of stop hunt above that level and prices you know come down but again that has to be really kind of driven by either Australian dollar weakness or yen strength so it really just depends on which one you're looking towards and finally gold so gold um, you know uh, obviously with dollar weakness we definitely had uh, some some gold strength also as well you know bounced off of this demand zone here uh, right at the top end of it but um, I do think also as well that gold is looking like a medium to long term buy simply because, you know, we're, we're looking at um, economics. If we're looking at economic cycles, right? So economic cycles being um, uh, going like this. So where you have uh, the uh, expansion and boom phase of the economic cycle and then you have the contraction and then bust and slump phase and then you have the recovery you know expansion and the boom phase again and then it goes into the same thing contraction bust and slump right so if we're heading if the if the world is heading into a uh, the, the 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 potential for a recession right the contraction we're seeing economies around the world you know deal with things like stagflation and uh, and contraction right then and maybe even the the US is going into uh, the a, a potential recession next year um, then you would think that that would be a risk off environment which should push gold eventually higher now how it goes higher nobody knows it could you know pull back it could do something like this it could do something like this it could even come down to you know to these demand zones here but overall when we're looking at what's happening next year potentially with rate cuts um, you know, fears in the economy over contraction, interest rates wake it, working their way through the economy, um, then I would probably think that gold should want want to move higher over the medium to long term. As I said, no one knows in the very, very short term what will happen. But just basically, um, if you are looking at buying on dips, I think that would be, um, wouldn't be such a bad idea. So yeah, that's really it for gold. If you are looking to get short, there is uh, a supply zone right here of course you would have to think that the dollar is definitely going to strengthen um, so where we are now decent area to look for some shorts technically but um, if you are medium to long term um, uh, bearish on, on currencies devaluing um, due to rate cuts and recessions then gold uh, should be really the buy on 
pullback. So uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis and you found it useful. And uh, until next week, take care and I'll speak to you all soon.